Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another day of Frizzmas. This video is a collab video with my best friend here on YouTube, Yachty Beauty. We are collabing to do Samantha March's 2022 makeup releases tag. So if you wanna see my answers to these questions, keep watching this video. Let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you wanna hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So Samantha March is a beauty creator here on YouTube and she did a collab video with Angelica Nequist and they are talking about 2022 releases. So I'm really excited to answer these questions. I think I'm okay with my answers and I cannot wait to see Yadi's answers. So I will have Samantha's video, Angelica's video and Yadi's video linked in the description box. Let's get into it. It. Question number one is what mainstream release lived up to the hype most this year? So when I looked through my palettes and thought about mainstream releases this year, one of the ones that really stands out is the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. I really do like this better than the first one. I actually repurchased the first one after realizing how much I liked the second one. I don't know what it is about it, but I really like the gradient of shades in this palette. I love the two creams, they're great. And I really love the mattes. I think these shimmers were way better in this palette than the first one. Overall, I just think the looks are so pretty. They just look romantic. I don't know how else to explain it. Again, these creams are really, really nice eyeshadow bases and eyeshadow primers. They're like rich. And then I think it's this one that I really like, this shimmer. Now sometimes, oh yes, like this one, so pretty. I love that one. That might be my favorite shimmer in the palette. But they're all really, really nice. This one is like, has a slight duochrome uh, to it pink to gold flip that one's really nice out of all the mainstream palettes this is the one that throughout the year i can say i really like this one and it this palette is still standing out to me in december so i had to put this as my mainstream palette that really lived up to the hype this year now question number two is the same question but we are talking now about an indie release that lived up to the hype this year. I'm gonna have to go with the Halloween collection from Unearthly Cosmetics. Now, this collection had four palettes. I was very privileged to receive the palette of my choosing and I chose Warms My Blood, AKA the Aaliyah palette. And this palette really lived up to the hype. I also saw another palette in that collection that I did wanna purchase, but I did not end up grabbing that one. I love how she created four palettes based on movies. This one was Queen of the Damned and then you know there were the three other palettes. And again, this is the only one that I purchased, but huge standout. First of all, I have not seen a palette that pays homage to our girl Aaliyah. I'm like, juice, mom? Yes, you may have juice. The setup of this palette is great. How you have the two columns of mattes and then the two columns of shimmers. And in addition to that, and in addition to that, the shimmers in this palette are not the densely packed ones that they tend to do sometimes. These are like those really wet looking shimmers. And I'm just gonna pick a couple shades to swatch. So we have Jessie, Queen, and Charmed. Look how beautiful those shades are. Let me turn this exposure down for a second so we can really see. Hopefully that looks a little bit better, but those are just three of the shimmers. I just think this collection was really well done. The other three palettes were a little bit smaller. This is the one that really called out to me the most, and I'm so glad to have this palette in my collection. So out of all the indie releases, this one really stands out to me. And of the four palettes you know, that I was able to choose from, this is the one that really called my name. I just love the color story and everything about it. So yes, kudos to Unearthly for another great release. <sighs> Question three, okay, I feel like I'm gonna have a lot of uh, unpopular opinions here, but it's which releases did not live up to the hype? 
I feel like I have more things that didn't live up to the hype than that did, which is unfortunate, which also means I need to make better choices in 2023. Let's start with a recent disappointment. We have here the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. And I think this really didn't live up to the hype for me because I have the Mel Thompson bundle by Sydney Grace. And that bundle is just really well done. It provides a lot more range than the Natasha Denona palette and it's gonna work for a lot of people. I just posted a video on this the other day, so I'll have that linked and it will be in the Frismas playlist as well. But these shades to me are a lot more ashy and the Sydney Grace bundle is a lot more peachy. It gives more warmth and it gives more smokiness to the looks. I just think that bundle was really well done and put together by Mel Thompson. The other thing with the Retro Glam palette is I feel like several shades are too similar. Like these two greens are really similar and these two cool tone kind of light beige shades are really similar and we just didn't need those similarities in the palette. I really like the looks that I did with the Sydney Grace bundle way more than I did with this one. And I'm not mad at this color story by Natasha Denona because this one really does go with the mini retro, but it just didn't frost my cookies. So this one definitely did not live up to the hype for me. You're probably expecting this, but another release and these next two that I'm gonna talk about are both by Mama Pat. And as much as I love Mama Pat, there were just some disappointments this year for me. One is the Celestial Nirvana palette, the Mothership Mega, and this was the holiday palette. And you all know how excited I was when I saw this collection releasing because she did do a great presentation with the holiday collection. Like she really did that. She had this palette. She had the two small palettes. She had a highlighter, a blush. She had blush, oh, these like blush quads. I mean, she had mascara. It was a really put together collection and the presentation was very grand. This is what a lot of us have been asking for. You know, I was expecting something like this for Utopian Dream. I honestly was. And, you know, didn't really get what I wanted then. But you know what? I am going to stop complaining about Mama Pat because now I got what I wanted. And I, I swear out of all of my Pat McGrath palettes, I've never had so much trouble coming up with looks. This palette was really difficult for me to put looks together. I don't know why, but it really was. I mean, she gave us the green and blue mattes. She gave us fiery reds, a navy blue. She gave everything purple that we were asking for. But when I went to put these looks together, they just really weren't coming together for me. I even tried to stay in uh, the six pans that these were separated into. And I just didn't like what I was coming up with. And I didn't like what I came up with when I tried to mix between the six pans. This palette just did not work for me. And it might be something that I have to work with or give another chance. And maybe I'll like it next year. Like that's how I felt with Melt's Amori Mariposa's palette. It just didn't grind my gears like the way I thought it would. It's a shame predicament. Another palette that really was like not living up to the hype was the Pat McGrath Bridgerton part two palette. And I think after seeing the first palette, the first palette, you know what? I do like the first palette a lot more than this second palette here. But when the second one came out, I was just like, are you seriously giving us like these same two colors? Like, because the only difference really was this shade here, which we have something very, very similar in Mothership 3 Subversive, this shade Gigabyte. So I was just like, you know, and then I just have to think that Pat McGrath is not thinking that people that buy her palettes have every single palette or close to every single palette. So I'm not going to be mad, but I am just saying that this one was a disappointment because if you watch Bridgerton, there are so many opportunities for color and the first palette really didn't give us that and neither did this one. There were so many opportunities for vibrant colors if you watch Bridgerton. So I just wasn't sure why we were stuck on the same color scheme, even for part two. I was just very baffled by that. And I did feel hoodwinked, bamboozled, and led astray. 
uh, with this palette. I just didn't understand it. So this was a letdown for me. Maybe we'll put that as a snooze fest. This next one, I don't wanna say that it didn't live up to the hype, but I have to mention it. I actually have to mention these next two palettes. And unfortunately, both of these palettes are by another brand that I really love, which is Melt Cosmetics. I know. So first we have Gemini 2. I was really excited when I saw that Mel was teasing Gemini 2. They didn't tease it very long. And when I saw the color story, I was very excited. I was like, this is it. This is it. The issue was, and it wasn't a quality thing, but when I put the palette on, every look looked the same. And it may have something to do with my skin tone with my undertone because I have seen people do looks with this palette and these look different but on me they did not and I'm gonna have to go ahead and give this palette another chance I never like to make any definite claims about a palette but I did try this a few times and I just could not get the shades to work this palette was almost too deep for me in a way and I wish that maybe there were a couple of maybe shimmers or lighter shimmers maybe like this. If it was like a peachy champagne, I think that would have been great. And maybe like I love this color right here, but like all of these are so grungy and deep. They just look the same on my eyes. I am going to have to play around with this palette a little bit more, but I was really like disappointed that I couldn't get my looks to look like other looks that I saw content creators doing. It just was not working for me. So I will come back around and work with this palette. I also think that the less shades that I use, the better because it was all kind of merging into one shade. These were all merging together and I could have just used one light and one deep and kept it like that. And that's what I think I'm going to do the next time I go for this palette, but I haven't been called to using this palette because of that. So this was kind of disappointing because even looking at this palette right now, I love the way this looks, but the execution of it on me, it might've been something that I was doing, just wasn't coming together for me, you know? The other palette by Melt that I just think this was more of an evolution in my eyeshadow taste, but I'm still glad to have the palette, is Muerte. There was no way I was not getting Muerte. Like it just wasn't happening. And I knew when I purchased it that this color story, the way that I felt about it in the beginning, that I did feel a little bit differently about it. But I look at it now and I'm still happy to have it even just looking at it. But I don't feel like this was the easiest palette to work with. I don't really enjoy these colors as much. So this is another palette I need to work with a little bit more, but like having it, it made me so happy. I was so happy to hear that Melt was finally bringing this back because it was a palette that I missed out on. I wasn't into makeup when the original Muerte palette came out. But again, these, these shadows, oops, these shimmers aren't the greatest quality but I already know that about Melt. So I, I knew what I was getting myself into. And I think these pigments here, they're not the easiest to work with. I, I don't wanna say this is a disappointment, but I just wanted to mention this palette because I was really hyped about it. I was really happy to create the looks, but I didn't really care for the looks too much. And I don't really feel like I enjoyed the experience of putting the looks on. So just being honest, but still happy to have this palette. I mean, I'm not getting rid of it or anything like that, but just being honest, you know, because I know y'all know like how much I, if you've been with me for a while, I would always be hinting about how I missed out on wear tan and everything. And now I have it and it's like, it's just okay. But that's what happens sometimes, you know, especially with FOMO. Sometimes you get something that you've been waiting for and it really wasn't all that to begin with. And that's just the reality. I mean, that's what FOMO is all about, you know? That's it for makeup releases that didn't, Oh no, no, no. I have another one, hold on. Let's talk about these Gucci blushes. So what were these, $50? No, I'm sorry. I think these were completely overpriced and they're, I don't think they're that great. I don't think they're special. I don't think there's anything 
that is groundbreaking about these blushes. They're just okay. Am I gonna still wear them? Yes. Do I think they were worth $50? No. You know, we're just paying for the Gucci name. I mean, I had to try them. You know what I mean? I just had to try them. And they're just okay wouldn't pay full price for them. Let me know how you feel about the Gucci blushes, but we really were just paying for the name. They're average blushes. They are not like another blush that I'm gonna mention um, as an unsung hero. So they're okay. Now next is the biggest curveball, and these palettes are brand new. I literally just got them and just swatched them, but they are, I would say two of the most beautiful palettes that I bought this year, was not looking for them. The brand wasn't even on my radar, okay? And these palettes are the Evergreen palette and the Metamorphosis palette from Lethal Cosmetics. This palette, the Metamorphosis palette, really, really caught my eye. I think this palette is so beautiful. And then it says the most profound change is the one that gives you wings. First of all, the warm tones, the pinks, the orange, the reds, beautiful. But then you have this, this right here, yes, okay? It takes a couple of these colors that were in Gemini too, but the variety in this is going to allow me to have different eye looks. I'm probably being presumptuous about this being a curveball. It definitely was because I wasn't looking out for Lethal. I was not paying attention to Lethal. I have one palette from Lethal, the Night Flower palette, and that one's really nice, but it's like a blue purple color story, so I don't go for a whole lot. But look at these shades. I mean, these are absolutely beautiful. I just was not expecting this. And then the evergreen palette. Look at the greatest tree was once a seed who held its ground. So, you know, I'm a huge fan of having the browns with the purples and blues. And we get that. We get that grunginess. We get this green. Oh, my gosh. I was going to say it reminds me a bit of Wicked Envy from Midnight Sun, but it doesn't. We have this duochrome here. And that's kind of this is kind of a, a common duochrome that we see a lot, but who cares? And then these two blues are gorgeous. I mean, look at this one, beautiful. And then like these mattes, like this neon color, I'm so into this. This video is coming soon. I cannot wait, but these two palettes really threw a curveball because I really hadn't seen anything recently that really stood out and caught my attention. And I saw these and I was like, oh no, these, these are mine. So sorry. Now this next one is gonna be a really unpopular opinion. This is the biggest letdown for me. I don't wanna call it a snooze fest, but that's what question number five is, the biggest letdown, the biggest snooze fest. Actually, a couple things because, let me see, some of the things I don't own. Oh yeah, hold on. Mm. Okay, hold on. So I feel like I was gonna talk about the Mothership 10. Oh no, I didn't talk about the Mothership 10. Okay, I talked about Celestial Nirvana. Okay, I got Pat McGrath all up and through here. Let's talk about the biggest letdown. I don't wanna call these snooze fests because this is just more of a personal opinion. So I'm gonna talk about Mothership 10. <sighs> it's okay, you know, it's all right. It's kind of a cool toned palette. It's something that Pat McGrath doesn't have a lot of. Up until now, she just has subliminal as far as her cool tone mothership. So I feel like she was due. It's not horrible, but as of right now, it is my least favorite mothership. This shade is really pretty, the VR Sex to See. I know everybody loves that. It is very nice, but we do see this shade a lot in indie maybe slightly different formulas, but it was just okay. These two mattes, too similar for my taste. She didn't have her traditional bake shades that a lot of people look forward to. So this palette was just all right. I'm not gonna harp on it. It was just okay. I'm not mad at the vision. Sometimes I don't see the vision until months and a year later. So I'm not going to just totally down this palette. It just wasn't my favorite. I was just like, eh, okay, like I am gonna get it, but I wasn't really excited. I do feel like her promo for the palette was on point. You know, it wasn't misleading, but I just wasn't into it. And the other palette, y'all, is this Isamaya Beauty Industrial Palette. And I know this is a very unpopular opinion, but I don't know what's up with my palette, but it is very fussy. 
I am just not sure what I am doing wrong, but if you look at my palette, my palette looks like it has been through the storm. It looks like it has been through the flames because I'm struggling. I'm struggling to get this palette to work. Like when I use my finger, some of these shades aren't even really showing up. Like, no, no, Scott. Like, don't tell me it's a topper, no. There are some nice shades in this palette, like the shade Whip, but some of these shades, I just, like what is happening? Look, nothing is on my finger hardly. And I don't know what I'm doing wrong. These putty shades, I'm, are these drying out? Oh no, they're not drying out. But on the eyes, they don't look different. Like this one is actually, I think navy or it's black with some blue sparkles. This one is black. I'm not using these putty shades. I'm just not. This palette is fussy for me to work with and I am starting to lean away from that because I have less time to fool with this makeup. I love the color story though. I think the color story is great, but I really tried. I tried with this palette and I don't think in my initial review, I said it was like super great or anything misleading, but you do have to work with it. And you know, it's just not a palette that I'm gonna reach for often because I'm usually trying to do something quick that I could put together without a whole bunch of thought. I feel like I have to go through this palette every time I wanna use it and take tape to it and like peel off a layer or something. So I don't know if it is just my palette because I've watched other people use this palette and I'm like, they're having an easy time and I'm not. So this was a big letdown for me. I don't know when I'm gonna use this palette again. And that's why I didn't want that other collection, that cowboy collection. First of all, that was in like a circle shape and I had so much bad luck with this one. I just wasn't into the new collection. So let me know if you know, cause I don't know. Something might have been wrong with my palette. Cause I've talked to so many people that are like, oh my gosh, I love it. And I'm like, I don't think I do. Because after I did my video, I did try to work with this palette several times. And I'm like, I don't know if it's me or if it's the palette. So right now, this is the letdown for me because I was so excited. I did not know who Isamaya Beauty was, but once I read up on her and was like, yes, like I am into this, it just didn't really frost my cookies. So I, I have to put that for uh, the biggest letdown. And there's more. Are you gonna say anything? Okay. I got if, if you're new, if, if, if you're just coming back or new, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, let's get started. Can you show them this new smile? Because I'm into it. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, and look at that big tooth right there. Okay, that's enough. I was going, I was going to get a drink. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, everybody loved your breathing interlude. What does that mean? The one when I when you did my makeup and it was like you were like uh, breathe yeah, in, yeah. breathe out. They said maybe you'll start a meditation channel. No. What? That's what they said. That's what they said. I didn't say it. They said it. <laughs> okay, let me finish up. Come on, because you're going to be asking me to come on. Yeah. All right, so where's my notes? Wait, where's my phone? I forgot I took like real notes. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. So nice. That means he wants something. I did take real notes. Okay, what do I have? What do I have? We have to go there. Now I will say this brand had good reason to not go all out with their holiday collection, but I'm so disappointed because that's just how I am. We are talking about none other than the Melt Cosmetics. Okay, first, so you know what? They kind of set themselves up for this though, because last year and every time I film my Amori Mary Pulses PR box, 
is against the wall right here and i see it every time like damn the promo was so great it was like a trailer the pictures the inside of the box had velvet i mean we had brushes we had the palette the blush palette there were lipsticks there were glitter lipsticks there were the cream liners i mean did i say brush set they did it but what they also did because many of us got hoodwink bamboozled and led astray the pr box was really expensive it was like 400 something dollars they said that that was actually a discount if you were getting all of the collection it was a discount if you bought it ahead of time versus buying it i guess at the launch or whatever lo and behold at the launch why was the whole launch 25 percent off no scott like everybody was mad like that bought a pr box including me because i was going to return it i was like i i i will gladly send this back and they were like well due to COVID, just you know keep it and we're going to refund you because i could return that unused and just repurchase what i wanted for the 25 percent off like that's crazy the only thing that wasn't 25 percent off was the pr box but I could have pieced together what I wanted like totally from the collection and pay way less. Y'all, I was hot because in the past, and I haven't been, you know, on a lot of these holiday rodeos yet, but I know that when Melt came up with their Beetlejuice collection the year before, that collection was $350. I kind of still wish I bought that entire collection. That collection was not on sale when they had the Black Friday sale. This, however, was, and I was hot. Then on top of that, I, I did like the looks I came up with with the palette, but there was something about that palette having the circle pans that I really struggled with, and it has taken me a full year. That palette is really good. I still wish that they had it in their traditional format, like the Gemini 2 palette that I showed you, and just had two palettes. Did I just say that? I was thinking that if I didn't say it. I wish that's what they did, but they didn't. But Amore Mary Pulse is a good palette. That palette literally went down, y'all, to $28. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if they overshot the pricing because the collection was beautiful. It was so beautifully done and the promo like i said the box the trailer the velvet the pictures of laura oriano y'all know that's my girl like everything about it but it was just really really expensive i, I guess people just were like no but i also feel like those circle pants had had something to do with it and they were promoting it as like our first palette with circle pants I am telling you that when brands go from square to circle, it is not a good sign. It's just not a good sign. I want Menagerie to go back to square pants, which leads me into my real point. Melt Holiday Collection this year was the Zodiac Collection. And I just, because of the Beetlejuice Collection and because of Amor Eterno, which I think was 2018, I don't know what they did the other years. I don't even know if Melt comes out with a big holiday collection every year. I'm not in the game long enough to know, but this wasn't it. Like, what was it? Wind, water, air and fire, like Captain Planet. Like I, and of course, when Laura does her looks, she can make me want anything, but I cannot want those circle pants. I don't know what it is about the circle pants. I'm not sure. Going back to Amore Mary Pulses, that palette is great. It is very, very nice. Quality is great, shimmers are great. Every shade is really good. So I don't know if the formula in the circle pants is different from the rectangular pants. I'm not sure what is happening here. But what I'm saying is I'm not gonna find out because I don't feel like that was a really creative release. I think I just think they could have just skipped it. And they didn't really promote it as a holiday collection. The only thing that made me know was that there was a hashtag that said Melt Holiday. That's how I knew. But at the same time, if I'm a business person and my holiday collection last year didn't do well, I'm gonna tread lightly on the next year's holiday collection because 
we don't have money to waste. And I feel like with Melt putting that collection on sale, Amore Mary Posas, at the launch, that made me feel like they knew or had some, some foresight that it wasn't gonna do what they thought it was gonna do. So now this year, I feel like they played it really safe. I kinda would have rather them just come out with nothing. And then now they have some brow products. I just, you know, secretly was looking for something, but I don't know what could top Beetlejuice. I don't know what is gonna top, well, you know what? I really like the Beetlejuice collection. I don't know what's gonna top that. Or uh, Amore Eterno for, for that matter because I've seen that PR box and what came with that collection and it was beautiful. So I hope that Mel gets their creative juices back because I just felt like the Zodiac palettes, like, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what that was. Okay, that's it for Snooze Fest. Retro Glam could go on Snooze Fest too. I have that. Mm, I'm sorry, we gotta keep going because I don't know what else I'm gonna talk about this stuff. I was looking for more from Kaleidos this year. They really played it safe and I'm not mad. So one of the things I said on my makeup wish list for last year was that I could not wait for them to come out with blushes. And they came out with blushes and I was just like, hmm. Because when they came out with the blushes, they had the, what was it called? The coffee collection or something. It was like a brown quad, kind of cool tone brown. If it was warm tone brown, it might've got me. It was a cool tone brown quad and then the black quad. It was like cold brew and something. I, it just wasn't for me. But what I will say, because I'm gonna be fair here, Kaleidos did not have any neutral palettes. So I can understand the idea of coming out with these two quads because they didn't have anything. So yes, that made sense for the brand. That's fine. And I passed. The blushes were not like the duo blushes that came with the Maker Escape collection, which was like, a shimmery blush topper or highlighter and then a blush and it just looks so good mixed together. It's really kind of galactic. It was really nice. I'm sure that their matte blushes were nice, but I am really into blushes that have a little bit of sheen, a little bit of, see that? Just a little bit of something there. They didn't have that. So I skipped more lip clays, which I love lip clays. Potential spam. And then they came out with two other quads. One was like this really bright purple, which was, I don't know, it was just a little bright. I saw Laura Mae Beauty use it and I was like, ooh, that looks good, but I know I won't really use it. And then one was more like of a cool tones, kind of purpley quad. And then they came out with these beautiful liner sticks but I had something similar or like, but I did have some duochrome eyeliners from Unearthly Cosmetics. So I just didn't feel like that was a need. Then they came out with some contour stuff. I was just like, where? Like when Kaleidos usually comes out, they have like the, the trailer and the promo and all that. So I love that about that brand. I love their packaging. I love just all of it but I wasn't really excited by the releases this year. So I don't think I purchased anything from Kaleidos this year at all, because I think the first set of lip clays that came out, I think that was last year. Cause I wanted them to come out with a palette and they did not. That might've been their second set of lip clays. Okay, it doesn't even matter because what I'm saying is it was a bit of a snooze fest for me this year with Kaleidos, but I really do love that brand. And I'm very curious about what they're gonna do next year. So there's that. That's gonna be it. I'm not going to continue to be a negative Nancy. Now let's go on to Unsung Heroes. And I have several of these, y'all. I'm so excited to talk about the Unsung Heroes. Let's just start with like a shocker here because I've never tried Oma Beauty. This Black Magic Freedom Palette, y'all, I can, okay? We can and we shall. First of all, this palette was so good, like I cannot. You got your shimmer row and your matte row. First of all, these mattes, these are all the mattes I need, like these brown mattes, because that's kind of what I've been going for. And then the shimmers are so special and they're all named after black leaders. Hello, King, Pac, X, Selassie, Garvey, Nelson, Lewis, Dubois, Fela, Nkrumah, Lewis, did I say Pac? Like, please stop the madness. Like these shimmers, I can't. I think that 
Uma Beauty must have done some type of reformulation. I'll zoom in on these. Let me just get them on. Something, they did something. Well, I don't know because I've never tried the brand. Like, I know these are not the best swatches, but y'all, like these are gorgeous. These are like indie single quality shimmers in a palette. Then if you like neutrals, I mean, you have that here. You can just use a mat and then let the shimmers really take the stage. You don't need a whole bunch of brouhaha. Like y'all, I'm mm, unsung hero for real in a palette. This is just spectacular. I believe someone told me when they came out with their Coming to America palettes, they started with this formula and this was a great move for them. I don't know if this is still available, but I would highly recommend it for sure. Unsung Hero RMS Beauty Blushes. I have three. Right now I am showing you Maiden's Blush. Now here's the deal. If you like blushes that have a little bit of shimmer to it, that are not going to enhance texture. If you have texture on your skin, I've watched several reviews on this because I can't speak to having like large pores or textured skin, but I have seen many reviews that say, all say that this blush with the sheen that it has does not enhance texture or pores. This is so beautiful. And then when you're done, you can buy a refill. I have three of the shades. I think there might be five or six. One of the best blushes of the year. If not the best blush I bought this year. I gotta think. Cause I also have Paradise Glow. And I really do like that. This is so good. Like if you had to choose, get this. I would get this over the Gucci blushes any day, hands down. Like these are gorgeous. I wish I could show you all the shades. I just, they're all mixed around. Mai Tai. Maiden's Blush, and then I have another one, Sangria. Y'all, they are beautiful. Unsung Hero, I didn't know where to put these. These Dior Addict Lip Shines. These are my favorites. Oh my gosh, I can. They smell so good. Like, I carry these around with me so much, I've even washed a couple of them and had to throw them away. Well, at least one, the other one I'm feel like I washed it. But these are so good, they smell good. They are just hydrating. They give you a beautiful tint. I just love these. The cases, the cases. This is my newest one, Plummy Clips. They're so juicy, oh my gosh. Unsung Hero, I wear these literally all the time. All the time. Okay, let me move on. Is that it? Let me see. Yeah, I have. RMS blushes, Uma, and Dior lip shines. Okay, best holiday collection. We're going with Odin's Eye. Okay, hi, Christmas Eve palette, wearing it now. Beautiful, let me show you. See, you didn't see all that specialness till we got up close. That purple to blue shimmer fade with the gold inner corner. Wait, wait, wait. No, we didn't see that. We don't see that from back here. Odin's did the damn thing. Okay, first of all, this is their first holiday collection. So yes to that. They need to continue to do this. Unique color story. I mean, this is like a beautiful stained glass. That's Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas. That's my Michael Jackson voice. Christmas. Y'all, oh my gosh, y'all hear me getting excited? Look at that. I can, okay? This video is coming. It's coming, y'all. It is coming. I probably already told you I had this on. It's coming. They did it. They did it with these palettes and they're sold out. I hope that they will restock these because you can definitely wear these outside of winter, Christmas, holiday. You can wear these all year round. And I love the contrast. You got one cool, one warm, but they're both very festive, very beautiful palettes. This. This really did it for me for holiday. I saw these and I was like, wow, like this is so special. And you know, they just came out with these two palettes. They didn't do a whole bunch, you know what I mean? And they're very well done. Each palette has a multi-chrome shade. Like Odin's makes me happy. I am here for it. All right, we have two questions left. There's only nine questions, but I've been talking a lot. So best collab, number eight. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, I got one more holiday collection, hold on. I have to give it to the Hourglass Tiger palette. You know, these palettes were questionable because they did not put the same types of products in each palette. But I will say that, you know, if you shop Hourglass, 
you know that some of these palettes, I would say for the past couple years, since I have been looking at holiday collections, they look the same and you can't tell the difference. This tiger palette doesn't look like anything that they've come out with, period. This palette and the elephant palette have more new shades. The butterfly palette, I think, had the most repeats. This orangey type blush, these blushes, look at, can you, look at that color. You got like this highlighter blush topper, this rosy blush. And then, you know, for me, this serves as a bronzer. And then you have these two highlighters, like one's a regular and one's a strobe. What else can you say? Very unique color story for Hourglass, something new. And finally, creating palettes with like deeper setting powders. Like I said, this works for me as a bronzer, but like this is a setting powder for someone with richer skin. And I'm glad that they are finally getting on the good foot, doing the right thing because they were not doing what we needed them to do in the past. So I hope they keep that up. You know, overall, the release was, like I said, it was a little sketchy just because the butterfly palette was the lightest one, but had the boldest blushes that were similar and then the elephant one. Love that one because it's got the setting powders that I love, but I wish that it didn't have two pink blushes and that there was a coral blush in there. Bronzer's a little weak, but this tiger palette, this, this is a win. And now I'm done with holiday releases. Best collab for 2022 is gonna go to the Adept and Heather Austin palette. I feel like this was a very organic and natural collab. If you watch Heather Austin, you will know that she really loves Adept Cosmetics and she just loves all eyeshadow. I mean, I, even if it's something that she doesn't really care for, I never hear her like down anything or speak badly. I mean, she is just such a makeup enthusiast and she does really, really great looks. Like she can do a great look with literally any palette. But I do know for a fact from watching her, she loves Adept Cosmetics. And so this was like a very natural collab. I really loved the colors that she chose. And I knew like before I even saw the palette, when I saw it was her, I knew I was gonna get it just because I just had a feeling she was gonna pick out some really good mats. I think the four mats that she chose for her collab were really great choices. Like the yellow mustardy shade, the green. You have this uh, beautiful transition shade here. It's kind of like orangey beige and then the plum. Perfect, these were perfect. A couple of Adept palettes I have, like the Minka palette and the Ninhydrin palette. I kind of wish one of the mattes were a little bit different, although I, I love those palettes. You got Video Chat, which is really beautiful. I mean, ev everyone, so excited. Look at that, so excited, so beautiful. And then the, the names, you know, behind the shades. You know, I love, look at this. I love hearing the collaborator's story behind the names of the shades that they, they chose. So this was really nice. This was the best collab for me this year. And I probably should pull this palette out and use it again soon. Cause I just forgot like how much I really, really liked this palette. Really great collab. Great choice, I think, on Adept's part to choose her to collab with, because this is very nice. That's it for collabs. So the last question is, what are your predictions for releases during next year? This is really a hard one because I, I really don't know what to expect, but I'm thinking that we're going to be moving towards more ease and more simplicity. For example, like Charlotte Tilbury usually comes out with a palette for holiday, but this year she didn't come out with a palette. She came out with the pop shots and those were like easy one and done type looks where like I don't mind it, even though they're overpriced. There's a couple things that I got towards the end of the year that I just didn't really want to put in this tag because they're new, like the Victoria Beckham liner. I don't even want to get started on how good those are, but even the lid lusters by Victoria Beckham, like I have worn those and they make smoky eyes with one shade. You know what I mean? They are beautiful, like cream shadows. The Lisa Eldridge liquid Lorex, those are beautiful. So I am, thinking that we are heading to more simplicity. I've seen less with like the cut creases and the dramatic looks and more easy, simplistic, minimal type looks. 
people may call them like clean looks or whatever. I, I don't know if that's what it is, but maybe more minimal looks, more skin-like, more natural type looks. I think that's where we're headed. I really wouldn't mind that. And I even can see that happening with colorful looks. I just think it's gonna be using less. And I can say that when I started using eyeshadow and I was like doing looks with palettes, I wanted to use all the colors. I wanted to use like 10 colors in a look. Now I'm like, you might get three, you might get four, but like using all these shades and having all these like rainbow looks and stuff like that, I kind of see that, well, at least for me, I know this, we didn't ask about me, but I'm seeing more people lean towards these more natural and neutral looks. And if you think about the holiday collections this year, there were a lot of neutral palettes. Think about Makeup by Mario, he came out with a neutral palette. Juvia's Place came out with a neutral palette. Chanel came out with a neutral palette. There just seems to be a trend of more effortless type looks, like, oh, I just threw this together type looks that I, I'm liking. More of the fresh faced type situation. So I am here for that. That kind of goes with my whole vibe of soft life and ease, wanting to look put together, but not having a lot of time to do all these steps. So I am here for that trend, if that's the case. I am hoping to see the makeup releases slow down. I said that last year, but I've already seen some sneak peeks for summer 2023. So it's not gonna slow down. I think I just have to try harder to be picky about what I am going to give my money to. I said this last year as well, and it's still hard. But that's one thing that I wanna do. I wanna just make sure that I am continuing to pay attention to the things in my collection. This year I did create a spreadsheet where I do have all my palettes logged in and everything like that. So I'm gonna to have to count them up and see you know, what I have and is it drastically different from what I had in my eyeshadow collection video that I did at the beginning of this year. I really just want to be more aware of what's in my collection and really pay attention to the trends because it seems like a lot of things repeat themselves. And so when it repeats themselves, I will probably have some of the things in my collection. I can see how challenging it is for a brand to try to come up with something really fresh and new and not do something that they've done before. I think to prevent that, it would be nice if the makeup releases slowed down. But as I said, it's not happening. So those are my predictions for next year. And that's gonna be the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed this tag. Again, Samantha March, Angelica Nequist, and Yachty Beauty will be linked in the description box. Please go check out Yachty's video and see her thoughts on these same questions. And definitely put your answers in the comment section because I really would love to know your thoughts on these. The questions to the tag will be in the description box in case you are a content creator and you wanna do this tag yourself. So thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another day of Frismas. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. So until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.